It is my privilege again to introduce one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century to deliver the inaugural Core Cancer Research Center lecture. And I noticed the title of Judah Folkman, Anti-Angiogenesis and the Curing of Cancer. And of course, Judah Folkman was, like myself, a surgeon. And he made fundamental contributions to the discovery of angiogenesis and cancer. And by coincidence, he also gave one of the lectures to the Physiological Society in this very theater. So you're very welcome, sir. So I could ask you to deliver the first core cancer research. Be longer and uh, contain more facts than you know I should talk to you about because I know there, there are too many of them but I want to give them because uh, I think they sort of come to the can you hear me yes. okay fine that uh, that the conclusion I draw is that we should try and cure cancer now not 10 to 20 years from now. That is, it should be our primary objective. That is, uh, uh, that is we really have learned a lot. There's, we could learn more, but it would be sort of irresponsible to all these people who would die of cancer if we don't try and do it now. <laughs> uh, I got real annoyed with someone. You know, I, yeah, we, real bright, you know, good pedigree, runs a big lab. And at the end of his talk, he said, you know, we're going to get somewhere over the next 10 to 20 years. And he could have said 20 to 40. Or why didn't he say 5 to 10? So a 5 to 10 would actually put us on the line. People might actually show that we're wrong. And that's, you know, uh, but people are so frightened by being wrong that uh, I have a figure it doesn't matter if you're wrong if you're sometimes right. Main thing is to try. So that's why I'm going to sort of go through the facts. And I uh, started with Judah Folkman because he was my big hero. <laughs> and uh, he was, and I think the reason I liked Judah so much is that he wanted to cure cancer, not study it. He wanted to cure it. And of course he did it, and uh, I met him uh, sort of when I got involved with cancer. So, you know, we <laughs> knew each other for a long time, and then suddenly he died in the uh, Salt Lake City Airport, going to a meeting in Vancouver. And <laughs> it was like Christ has died. Yeah, I felt awful. I was a disciple. And uh, <laughs> you know, wanted uh, wanted anti-angiogenesis to work. You, know, you hear from my talk is that you know it's not going to work in a simple form, and uh, but that something might work. So that that's the uh, the point of the talk. And uh, there's a picture of Judah uh, in the early seventies. He was a surgeon. And, uh, you know, in those days I wasn't so wise, you know, I, I didn't think surgeons were very bright. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they you know, words of people to lead us, uh, you know, to, to curing cancer would come from molecular biologists. You know, people who could find the genes. Uh, and, uh, but there he is, and uh, you could say throughout his career, uh, and most of the people in the Boston community didn't believe him. But he, had a, he was remarkably well liked because he would spend part of every day talking to people with cancer. You know, he was. He was you know, he was a doctor at his best. You know, he wanted—he didn't want anyone to die. So, 
uh, anyways, you know, the judo was just some of the, you know, I, uh, after I moved away from Boston, you know, there wasn't a chance to see much, but we'd talk on the phone a lot. <laughs> and uh, his funeral was really creepy. Most of the doctors at Harvard Medical School didn't come to it. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> they, they realized they were not Judah and they didn't like it. You know, <laughs> you know he, he was really the only great person in Harvard Medical School. <laughs> yeah, he was. Okay, so you know, that, that's, uh, and uh, I met him in, uh, uh, the first time at a meeting on the National Cancer Advisory Board. Sidney Farber brought him there so that we could listen to his ideas that if you uh, could stop the uh, formation of new blood vessels into growing tumors, the tumors couldn't grow, <laughs> and you would cure cancer. So when I heard the talk, I didn't believe it at all. Uh, for two reasons. The one I've already said, he was a surgeon. <laughs> uh, and the second was that the only big idea we had about cancer was that of Otto Warburg, which was that cancers lived off glycolysis, not respiration. <laughs> and uh, so maybe they didn't need uh, oxygen. So cutting off the blood supply wouldn't, wasn't the way to go. And uh, so, but I think if probably, you, know, you sort of looked at it, the, and then here, uh, let's see. Now I pressed what I think, well, maybe it's this, yeah. So the, the, the big idea uh, when I, really went into cancer research when I went to Cold Spring Harbor in 70, in about 1970, was Otto Barber. And when I was a graduate student at Indiana uh, 20 years before, you know, the biochemist just, Barber had been right so often that, you know, <laughs> it was hard not to believe that he wasn't right in this sense. But, you know, we knew enough already by then to, you know, know it wasn't going to be everything uh, because cancer had to represent new mutations. So it was changes in genes. And then the, these changes would lead to the unique metabolism that uh, Barbara talked about. It's a picture of him. I met him in 1962 when I got the Nobel Prize. He was a sort of short, solidly built man who never married and every day rode a horse. So he sort of lived like a Prussian aristocrat and uh, uh, was half Jewish and despite that worked in Berlin throughout the war to Hitler's knowledge because Hitler was paranoid of getting cancer. And Warburg didn't you know, try and flee. He wanted to, he was a German. Anyways, that's, and lactic acid, you know, something people long forgot, but you know, if, if you see a lot of lactate, you're in trouble. And uh, the first person who ever lectured to me on cancer was uh, Van Potter, a biochemist at the Ricardo lab at the uh, University of Wisconsin. And uh, that lecture really changed me. It was in uh, the spring of 1958. And, uh, you know, pointing out that you gotta, there are two things, you gotta grow and you have to have energy. <laughs>